Hello world, welcome to another episode of Gameside Chat. And today I have a new guest, this time they're closer to home. And it's Fran Morris. Hi Fran. Hi, thanks for having me on the podcast, Tima. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome. Today, because we don't have many games in common, we decided to do WGT Golf, a free game on Steam. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> it looks fantastic. Oh man. Yeah, so I think I'll... How many holes do you want to play? Three or nine? What do you start with? Let's try nine. Let's just go straight cool, in. let's try nine. Neither of us right. have played the tutorial let's... for this, so yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm not coping with this warmness. <laughs> yeah, well, you've I'm been in the when wolf. it gets warm, you turn in the aircon. Oh yeah, uh, yes. that's true, yeah. We don't, we don't have that here. <laughs> it's just, we just suffer. This is <laughs> the British true. way. That's true. Uh, right, so I have absolutely no idea how to even move the person, so that'll be fun. Maybe yeah. I can quickly look at the controls. I think, so, oh, I can't actually, options, hang on. We should have done at least that, so that would have been, oh my god, there's no controls. No, this is just, this is just completely. Oh my goodness. Excellent. Wow, this is the best game I've ever played. Oh, okay, so at the bottom right, it shows you where you can hit the ball, so you kind of have a little bit of a spin, I think. Okay. I think. Yeah, just a tad. Okay, cool, whatever. Anyway, so let's start. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, first things first, what I ask everyone is, uh, so, why did you join Quidditch, and how long have you played it for? Um, so I joined Quidditch in my first year of uni. I, over summer, a couple of years before going to uni, I made friends uh, with someone who was like roommates with an Oxford nice. uh, player, um, David Delacker. I don't know if you've met him, um, but yeah, my friend then introduced me to uh, the um, the Quidditch team uh, when they came to uni, or, or a bit before actually. And they were all like, "Yeah, you should play Quidditch." And this particular friend was like, "No, you shouldn't play Quidditch. That's a terrible idea." Um, <laughs> and then I did. Um, and it was a terrible idea, and now here I am, five years later. So, yeah, I played for Oxford <laughs> University Quidditch Club, started in October 2015. Um, played with them for four years, uh, and mm -hmm. then moved to Mammoths this season. So that that's the only two teams you played for, or did you play for anything else? Um, I've played for Southeast Knights at QPL, a um, couple right. of Merc teams. Played for Bath in their first official game, don't really know why. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> here we are, um, and nice. I played for uh, Dossoraptors, uh, a Merc team that went to Barcelona Mustaches one year, um, and Team Island actually. That was a thing I did. Oh damn! So so where was that for when you played for Team Ireland? Uh, that was World Cup 2016. Um, Ireland finished second to last. We lost all our games, and the <laughs> only team that finished behind us was I. I think South Korea actually. Um, hey. Yeah. Um, uh. Who had to forfeit? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they told us like they're like yeah we couldn't field players at the end of it. Everyone died. I was like, how many people did you come with? Like nine. I was like, oh yeah, that's your problem there. Yeah, that that does check out, doesn't it? That's not. <laughs> it's not shocking. <laughs> Was there many people in for the Ireland team? Um, there were like twenty. There was a full twenty-one. Um, oh no, I've just yeeted the ball oh. off. The oh, edge. you. Oh, is that in the rough? Yeah, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> um, Damn. This can only go well. I have no idea how this game works. Yeah, it was like a full twenty-one. Um, a couple of people from Ireland. Um, mostly just UK players who were of Irish descent, like myself. It was a team of a lot of beaters <laughs> as well. Um, ah. and yeah, it was, it was a fun time. We lost all of our games. Um, but yeah, it was a very interesting experience. I mean, fantastic. The World Cup 2016 was like a really excellent tournament and I'm glad I got to be a mm. part of it. Team Ireland had some excellent people who were, um, you know who I'm still friends with, and yeah, it was a generally all around great experience. Um, I had to keep at one point, um, because we had one oh, keeper wow. and he got red carded for a helpless receiver tackle. Thanks, Ollie. Um, yeah, it was a good time. 
Oh man. Are they gonna try and reassemble the team for the next World Cup or nah is it gone? Um now? I haven't been involved in Team Island since um I was there on the squad in twenty sixteen. Um I think there's you know, there's hope that Team Island will continue to have a squad and like there's definitely still active people in it and um they did better at last World Cup twenty eighteen. Um I don't know how they did it at European games most recently. Um mm. but there were like I think hopefully plans for them to have gone to World Cup this year and hopefully plans for them to go to World okay. Cup next year. Um and there may even be uh, other international level tournaments which may be in very early stages of potentially planning. Um Right, so that that was that. So I think I should ask you more. So you said you played for the you played for Oxford Uni and then you went for the I guess what's it called? Their community version of it. Yeah, basically. Um there's no like formal name for the OUQC Mammoth relationship. Um but yeah, uh, Mammoth was founded in uh Mammoth was founded in twenty uh eighteen. Um and OUQC were always quite close to Mammoths and um like we've trained in the same place and a lot of mammoths were part of OUQC beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. and so there is like quite a symbiotic relationship and it's definitely developed over the course of the last year, um, where mammoths have like helped out with coaching OUQC, um, and, um, wow, I did it. I finally got it in. Um, <laughs> hey, nice one. so for example, uh, our captain, Abby, um, she coached them at Dev Cup, uh, and which they won, which was fantastic. Um. That was really good to see. Um, but yeah, I did four years at a uni team and then I have done the season on the community team, so have experienced both sides. I actually joined okay. Oxford in the old era when they were still um, at the top of the league. So right. I was in the squad that won BQC3 in 2016. Um, so okay, I've well. gone right from all ends of the spectrum uh, of Quidditch, <laughs> <laughs> Quidditch levels. Ah, fair, fair. So, how did you handle that transition from uh, from a uni team to a community team? Did you have any difficulty, or was it just like yeah, natural? Um, like it's a lot of the same people. When I trained with Mammoths for like the year before, I think that's one of the nice things about their relationship now is that people on OUQC who want to go to Mammoths trainings um pretty much can. Um, so mm. like the way things tend to work nowadays is that um you'll get uh, we'll have mammoth training from like 10 or 11 and then OUQC will show up at about one or two and then we'll just join in the training for scrims and stuff. Um, okay, well, wow, good shot. I don't understand this game. <laughs> oh, 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 no, okay. Oh, no way. <gasps> oh, I'm a pro. Damn. Did you play golf in your life? Too shabby. No. I know it's not much of a Quidditch question. No, never. Um, I actually, I mean, I did a little bit when I was younger. I mean, I live kind of near Surrey, so I don't know. Golf is not, I don't watch a lot of it. I don't play a lot. My uh, dad plays. Mm, um, yeah. yeah. It's just because when, when I lived in Korea, they kind of live and break, breathe like golf. Like everyone plays golf on their, really? like they do golf, they do, uh, yeah, it's like a big, I want to say almost a national sport, but like they have a lot of golf stuff, and like they even have you know drive ranges that you just go and you try your uh, drives. It's crazy. Yeah, I I know I know driving yeah. ranges. Yeah, I've been to like one of those with my dad when I was very small. I'm sure it was very mm. comical watching like a tiny girl try and hit things with golf. Have you played a lot of <laughs> golf then? Uh, well, not a lot, but uh, some, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think my lack of experience is showing in this game. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm beating you in this game because I played golf in your life. Yeah, yeah, oh, that's man. it. That's totally it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get back to Quidditch. Golf is boring. People are not here for golf. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you talked about how, like, I guess mammoths. Um, well, you kind of still work with your uni teams, but like, so how did that work? Like, how do you guys actually work with other uni teams? So. Um, mostly mammoths focus on, 
playing with OUQC because there aren't that many uni teams near them in the south at the moment. Um, there is talk, I'm just going to say that I hit that in. Um, there's talk of a Reading team potentially being revived, which would be really cool and really exciting. Um, and like hopefully Mammoths would be able to help out with that if that happens. Um, and we're mm -hmm. possibly looking to like build some relationships with other nearby uni teams, depending on, I mean, it's easier when alumni come to the club and then they have that link already, because I think it's quite difficult to artificially generate good links between mm. uni and community teams. Sometimes like you don't want to turn up a, a university team's training session and just tell them what to do. Um, yeah, like you exactly, have to. Yeah have a rapport and understand what they want to get out of it if you want to like help out um but yeah although you can see in mammoths it always felt quite natural okay so it consists of like just if they ask for help and that's when you come and offer so it'd be like in forms of trainings or it'd be like in terms of like coaching or so yeah um i think most yeah. OUQC trainings nowadays like definitely at weekends you get at least a couple of mammoths turn up because all quidditch is good quidditch and just having that experience yeah. there i think really makes a big difference um and you can get like quite a lot of of benefit i think from like um yeah just having people who have played for longer and just making little suggestions not necessarily like um taking okay. taking right. over or or being in charge all the time but just having a little bit more awareness and saying hey why don't you try this thing or giving a little bit of feedback where people want it or ask for it sometimes um like you can you can ask for help so um like obviously dev cup um is a really good example of where external coaches come into teams um and make mm -hmm. a big difference um but and that's that's been really great and like, we've had like massively positive feedback on dev cup and coaching so you can get uh, a lot of good out of the, that external coaching but i think it really helps especially if you do have um uh like that established relationship so when OUQC asked Abby to coach them I think like it was really great that she knew all their strengths already and knew what to focus on in the like training during the tournament and in terms of like mentality um right so we've done the help stuff now obviously like like I said you well you played in both uni and community so let's let's go and do the, the positive so what did you like better about playing for a uni team as opposed to playing for a community team um, I mean, you know, OUQC being my first club will always be, um, like, like associated with so many good memories and like this, this team mm -hmm. spirit that I think is just so like, it's really like exactly what you need when you're at uni to have that sort of tight knit group of people who you, you, you work really well together with and you, you get to have all these shared trips and experiences and yeah, I think mm -hmm. Chloe said something similar in her interview where it's just, you're all so close yeah, together and you're, it's so easy to just be like, does anyone want to do this? Or um, like we used to do, um, this is going to sound so lame, um, but such is Oxford University, um, study parties where we just like, if people had work to do, but we didn't want to do it alone, like a lot of OUQC would just be ready to just like go to a cafe, chat and do some work and like, just any of that kind of stuff really is just it, it okay. makes a big difference and also like having regular socials with a with a uni team um is yeah, really definitely. good to get to know people and yeah you know each other so well that by the time you're on pitch it's just like um you, you, you have a better here. communication yeah because like i was saying like how for i guess for olympians like we do have our social sex and stuff but like it's very hard because people are in different places and it's like you got to commute and then like you can you don't have many you know because a lot of people are working it's like you can only do socials really on the weekend you train but then you have to get home and you're just like ugh. so yeah mammoths have had like socials every week in lockdown and like it's quite a nice sort of community and i think as a team we just chat a lot of shit um hmm. I, I like mammoths we you know it's it's a good time it's a it's a good set of people um and yeah i know a lot of teams have been doing that as well like OUQC as well have 
their weekly socials and it's nice to like be able to keep in contact with people and we're gonna i'm gonna forfeit the match sure why not withdraw <laughs> and we're gonna do a bit of tutorial but then we talk at the same time okay cool all right okay so you talked about how you like um well what you like better about the uni team but what do you like better about uh, being in the community team um i suppose it's nice to like have um a, a team where you can focus a bit more in training and like I think one of the most difficult things I found about being part of a uni team was that sometimes trainings were quite under attended and there's only so much you can do um, when you have um, when you have um, like three people who have turned up and then you pass around for a bit maybe try and do some drills and it doesn't really go anywhere um, so it's always nice okay. to have like training is a bit more of an event and you go there and you know there's going to be people there you know you're going to have some scrims and yeah I think that's that's really fun and like I guess personally for me um, Mammoths I haven't done any exec stuff because when I joined Mammoths the um, current committee were like no no you just you just take a year off because I've I had about three years um, in a row on OUQC exec uh, and I think running clubs is one of the most difficult things um, and one of the most important things in Quidditch um, because if you don't have clubs then you don't have the game. It's it's absolutely fundamental and yet there's so much work behind it that I think is really underappreciated. I guess you also have this like element of people are there to focus and they they have this you know people on community teams tend to be like yeah I want to play this game I'm turning up for a reason um, I th I guess this applies mostly to graduate teams rather than teams which are focused on um, recruitment external to universities which are few and far between at the moment. Okay. Also, I figured out how to aim in this game. You will not believe how to aim in this game. How do you aim? <laughs> you gotta click on the map. And then you gotta drag your thing oh where you wanna god. hit. Oh my god! Oh, that's what this arrow is trying to tell me. Oh my goodness. Yep, yep. So do you wanna do you wanna try again? <laughs> okay. Right. I oh, see. Geez. This would explain a lot. It would. Yeah. It's such a. But that's such a weird system. I mean, yeah. Like you said, like it, there's not really an answer. Like which one's better? Because then, like, obviously, it differs from person to person. So I think like people do need to think like what what they like more, in a mm -hmm. sense. Because I like I like the community team aspect more because I I want to take it a bit more seriously, and that's just my decision. Like, that's what I want to do. And especially with uh, Olympians, it's like uh, we found like uh, I guess like-minded people to do that with. But if that's not what you want, that's not what you want. No one's going to judge you for it, or at least no one should judge you for it. I think yeah, there's um, like I've been to a couple of Olympians trainings and. Um, they're in again like quite different from mammoth trainings and that's you know like i think all mm. community teams have a slightly different way of doing things um and it's yeah. good that there's choice out there so people can kind of pick what they think is best for them um so i'm gonna ask you something so when you played for for your university team did you were you in any yeah did you do any leadership roles or stuff like that like did you get involved much so um, when I joined OUQC, as I said, it was like in their golden era. And a year after that, everybody left and went to play for raptors and werewolves. Uh, so we lost mm -hmm. pretty much 60, 70% of the club, possibly even higher all at once. Um, so mm -hmm. pretty much everyone who remained was on the exec. Uh, so that <laughs> season, I was vice president and secretary. Um, mm -hmm. And then I went into being... Um, halfway through the season after that ended up captaining the seconds team when there was some chaos with the person who was supposed to be captain and then the vice captain was in hospital you oh, know man. like <laughs> these things happen and then I really enjoyed captaining the quidlings the second team so I carried on doing that for another season as well and then I was webmaster slash like background elder for the <laughs> <laughs> last um is that the official title uh yeah yeah if you look on the old oh, website yes. you'll just see background elder um, <laughs> that's what i do um yeah uh, and it's just kind of like you know you get to a point where 
that you're training up the new exec, but you're still there to try and like keep things running from behind the scenes and mm. be like, have you guys done this yet? And it's all a process. And like, you know, I, as I, you know, got older and in my last year, I really didn't do much at all. And the exec in the years below me took over, but I think it was nice to be there so that they, if they had any questions or things, uh, they could ask because you deal with like so mm. much random nonsense when you're in charge of a club, like there's recruitment, yeah. there's admin, health and safety. Um, and then I guess another thing that I did as part of OUQC is um, we had this like tradition of running Christmas Cup and Valentine's Cup and then we had no one to run it. So pretty much all of us just stepped up and did it. Um, and yeah, so that okay. was my first sort of intro to tournament directing and uh, helping out with running tournaments to start off with that's kind of how I got into doing that kind of thing. And like, there were some fantastically very, very competent, amazing people in the UQC who made that happen. And mm -hmm. uh, like Rob Brignall is fantastic, excellent. Um, and Emily Hayes helped run that Valentine's in the first season after everyone left. Um, and they're excellent. And like, um, like these people were just fantastic and taught me a lot about organizing things and budgeting and figuring out how tournaments work. Um, <laughs> like it's all, it's all a bit of a, a learning process, but yeah, I okay. had a, like, you know, it was a really good experience and then ended up running ATD and BQC all right. as a result of that kind of, well, like I, I'd done tournaments before and then ended up going to dev cup because I was captaining Quidlings, um, in 2018 and then started, yeah, doing that, uh doing quack tournaments as well so that was my first taste of that so you have been doing a lot of stuff yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of background stuff i'm not like a fantastic player or coach or mm. or tactical genius um but <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's necessarily the most important thing that keeps quidditch running um because you can have yeah, all the str strategies in the world but if you don't have any players it's not going to do you any good yeah that's true that's true yeah all right so i think let, let's look let's go like step by step so did you enjoy doing your uni stuff did you enjoy like doing the roles you did sometimes yeah sometimes no mm -hmm. um like it it's at some points it was really really hard work um i say the the best mm -hmm. bit is captaining the seconds team quidlings um that was great i really enjoyed it and getting to know the team and watching them do amazing things and progress and get better and better is just like the most rewarding thing. And it, it was like the team that I captained at Dev Cup was like 90% freshers or something. Um, we had like a bizarre bolster year, like a bumper year of recruitment where okay. we had about 25 freshers or something in our first like term. Oh, wow. And so it was, yeah, it was really a, uh, quite a lot of uh coaching and and development and Thuva uh Mathatharan who uh is now with Un Unspeakables um he was our coach during mm -hmm. that time and he did a lot of great work as well um teaching like these very you know like fresh players um all the things they need to mm -hmm. know for that tournament and yeah it's just like it's really rewarding to see people grow and people enjoy Quidditch and make friends and like become part of the club I think that's really great but then yeah. there's bits that weren't so fun like getting up at 5 30 a.m to go sit in the snow and collect waivers at valentine's four was less fun oh. um but there's yeah there's okay. good and bad and i think another one of the challenges of like being in a uni club is that students can be brilliant and inventive and creative um and talented and hardworking. and to do like loads of quidditch admin alongside the degree is pretty difficult um and students can also be chaotic and messy and there can be drama and things that you have to deal with that maybe you as a 19 year old aren't equipped to deal with um when you're doing your first exec role and i think that's yeah, it's really difficult and something that's really underappreciated is trying to keep people together, keep people invested and involved and and caring and at the same time, yeah, not like get, let it get to you um, and mm -hmm. and know how to manage people in a way that is, is healthy for them and like healthy for you as well because um, it's easy yeah. to get really invested and like there's some things that people came to me with that while well, I was an exec and you have like a pastoral role as captain and 
there's things that people came to me with when I was in that exact time that I was fully not equipped to deal with. Like, I was 19, I had no idea what I was doing with my life. Like, how how on earth was, like, I supposed to help people with things that were quite, quite complicated and I didn't always know where to point people and what to do, what was the best thing in that situation. Yeah, like, it's, I hope that in the future there'd be, and Quidditch is quite unique from other societies in that we've got the sporting element and so... With that comes responsibility for health and safety in both a like physical and mental sense, yeah. and like also doesn't always have the support of universities, athletic unions. Yeah, definitely, that's a big problem. Uh, and so, like, if you're in a situation where the uni aren't like a kind of checking whether you're like doing things right and but aren't really, and you don't have like paid professional coaches, and you don't have um, all the resources that you might normally need Mm -hmm. to to be able to like help people in this situation and to be able to deal with things like this um then it it can be really difficult like you don't have that experience and a lot of people who coach and captain in their first couple years of playing are quite young and there's some things that come with life experience and some things that come with training that people don't necessarily have Mm. To be fair, it is it is it is quite difficult because like it's like especially with uni teams like with community less so because you're more experienced. But like with uni teams, a lot of people in in leadership roles, like basically people stay like maybe three or four years, maybe a bit more in uni, but then they move on. So it's like you never really have that like like you know in football and stuff like that. There's like a you know an experienced coach taking care of you, but no, you're just like you're one of the peers and like you have to be like you have to make sure people are doing well. And it's just crazy. I think this is why like. I personally could never get into any leadership roles that would, uh, I guess, be ensuring of other people's, like, experiences and stuff like that. Like, it would be too much for me. I mean, it's, yeah, I think it's it's hard. Um, and I think it's <clears throat> under underrepresented in how difficult it can be. And it's very easy for people to hear about stuff like this and be just dismiss it as club drama. Um, but when it's like, yeah, if this fight gets so big our entire club will collapse because we won't be able to take a team to a tournament, then that's something that's bigger than uni drama. Like, that has implications for the wider scale of Quidditch. And I think it's something that, yeah, it's something that we've talked about in Quack EMT briefly. um, And we've we've had, like, conversations about whether it's worth providing some sort of training and, like, resources for club leaders to see if they need help to deal with these kinds of things and i don't know if this is just an experience that's like unique to me and don't get me wrong i loved being in club leadership it was rewarding and wonderful and met so many people like put it on my cv and got jobs because of it but it it was not necessarily the easiest thing either yeah i can can imagine and i think having resources to help with that would probably be really worthwhile i mean if we did it would be developed in probably in conjunction with club leaders and with other sports bodies to see if there's anything like we could provide yeah. um it's all very tentative mm. at the moment i don't want to say that anything's set in stone i'm always reluctant to uh get expectations oh, yeah, too true. high but yeah. but at the same yeah it's like yeah it's, it's definitely quite a needed thing because a lot of people i've had experience with some people that are just like oh this is a fun job and then they get into it and it's like oh shit no this is like I don't have the time, I don't have the motivation, I don't have the whatever. So it's yeah. kind of like, well, so why did you decide to do it? Like, oh, it sounded like fun. It's like, yeah, but like... And like, don't get me wrong, these things can be fun and they shouldn't be difficult. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. But I think Quidditch does come with its own like unique set of... Uh, it, like, it can be extra difficult, especially because, you mm. know, we, we're being very inclusive, but we don't have like the backing of like sports bodies or like and yeah especially like the first aid stuff like providing a first aid kit and having someone first aid trained at trainings and the responsibilities you have to the university and to your players are just really significant and i think it's difficult and i guess it varies for every team right it varies on your size and yeah definitely how experienced your players are but it's something that I think is really important. Man, did we just scare off everyone from doing any leadership? <laughs> I want to stress that it's not necessarily <laughs> bad and like there are resources out there and it's not hard. It's fine. Anyone can do it. Um, <laughs> but mm. I just think at the moment, like in very rare cases, it can be challenging to, and I, I don't, yeah, definitely. I basically want to respect the work that it takes to hold a club together, especially university clubs. It's, all very well getting a team of grown-ups to travel independently to a tournament and play for something that they care about. It's a completely different mm-hmm. thing 
getting 15, 18 year olds who started playing this three weeks ago to go to Southampton for some reason and like struggle in the mud. And it's, it's a lot yeah. of like emotional labor, like asking people if they're free and like you want people to stay, but you don't want to be too pushy and striking yeah, that yeah. balance is, you know, that's challenging as well. Like it's not just like drama or, or things that are difficult or first aid, but um, just the, like the little bits, they're all, they all add up. Yeah. Right, so we uh, l let's go the opposite way. Let's try not to scare people. Like, give us a good, uh, I guess, a good thing of uh, well, doing the leadership roles. That yeah, there's loads of good things. There's loads and loads. Um, so you learn so much about you know like time management and people management and um, like how clubs work. You get to interact with people from different clubs and and meet other people and contribute by you know going to like general forum and having your opinions heard and um you get the opportunities to like you know captaining is just fantastic it's a great mm. experience um and i think that yeah like managing clubs and you get to also like adding it to your cv can be quite significant so like the tournament stuff that i've done was basically the thing that people ask you about in job interviews and they're like what's this Quidditch tournament you organized? And then at first it's like a novelty and it helps them remember you. And then they realize that, you know, it's, it's like quite impressive and like yeah, exciting and like, like there's a lot of things that you can uh, use as an experience from it. So it definitely builds character as well a little bit. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like, you know, like, and it, it's nice to get to like work with your team and also give something back. Cause I, I know like my life's been dramatically improved by Quidditch. It's, it's great. It's fun. It's a bit stupid, but I, I'm a big fan <laughs> uh, overall and I love playing it. And it's, I think it's a fun, like a really good sport. And I think getting the opportunity to like keep the club going for a few more years and get in new players and is, is really fun. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. So let's go talk about your uh, TD duties. So, right. So I guess describe us what is the role from like let's say the tournament formation to tournament and and like after the tournament like what are your what are the stuff that you do so uh i'm events director for quidditch uk um mm -hmm. and that means that ultimately tournaments happening in the uk from quidditch uk are my ex my responsibility so that is in the case of the last season uh, and i've only been doing this since january december time um, it's recruiting tournament committees, mm -hmm. sort of explaining the process of running a tournament to them, supporting them. Um, booking venues happens from the Quidditch UK side of things because that needs to happen further in advance than we recruit tournament committees. And booking health and safety, uh, so like mostly first aid, working with Epian, who are, you know, excellent, uh, present at every tournament, uh, Paul. Uh, yeah. his his men and women who give like first aid coverage for everything we do and they know the sport and they love the sport and they understand the injuries and what's likely to happen and not so uh there's yeah there's those key things the like minutiae of the tournament itself like the structure is something that's decided by the tournament committee and the gameplay department so um okay and then there's also tournament media which is done jointly with like the media department and the events department and the tournament committee it very much depends on the tournament how much work needs to go into it it's got to the point where like for quidditch uk tournaments things are very much there's there's a process for how we do things um and it's down to a lot of people's hard work over a lot of years just building up these resources so we know how to like run things in a way that mostly works for us so for example like uh jen tyrrell who was my predecessor as events director she's created loads of like excellent resources for like um how we organize tournaments like how we organize like volunteer food vouchers and radios and ha what kinds of things we need to be focusing on and a, a checklist for each venue to see what resources they have and Alix, um, Alix Marie Davigneau, she's in the events department, uh, she's our scheduling coordinator and over the last couple of years she's developed a system of spreadsheets and google forms which all magically links together to make the tournament sign up process <laughs> work um, and it makes scheduling so much more straightforward than it would be without that it's 
honestly like a, a feat of Google Docs wizardry. <laughs> um, and yeah, she's just fantastic um, with all that stuff. So once you've got a tournament committee, you've got a venue, you've got a first aid booked. It's then about communicating with the teams, um, making decisions on rosters, uh, making sure that people are paying, you know, people have got everyone on their team signed up, like communicating with captains and dealing with issues that might come up in the lead up to the tournament. So, for example, if Sheffield floods, for example, um, or if there's the pitch markings are painted wrong, or if we suddenly have to move something and it's it's difficult to run a tournament without something going wrong uh it it does happen and you just have to be prepared and like work with the tournament committee and tournament committees do a fantastic job as well um they 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 play like the main role in the let's get all these things done at the tournament that wouldn't necessarily be what i do as events director but if you're tournament director you make sure that each member of your committee does all the things to make the tournament function so order gazebos make sure you're talking to the venue seeing what time we get in doing all the scheduling um communicating about when we turn the floodlights on and off doing the scheduling on the weekend organizing the referees there's a lot of work in running a tournament yeah it sounds like it you guys should get like proper salaries like (laughs) um it sounds like a lot of stuff to do i think that's a way away yeah but yeah it's events management is lots of different lots of different aspects and facets to it and then on the weekend you deal with any complaints or issues that might arise Mm -hmm. scheduling like well this is if you're a tournament committee um for example i tend to take a step back at tournaments nowadays as events director because there's other stuff that i do beyond the tournaments themselves but you know you get to give out the medals at the end so that's always fun um and usually there's (laughs) spare medals so that's that's another a bonus of being on tournament you get you get you get the sell them on yeah 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 if anyone wants um, you know (laughs) any counterfeit quark medals you know where to go (laughs) (laughs) nice just send them on the quidditch black market if anyone needs medals yeah i'm sure like (laughs) medals from like regionals five years ago will really go for a lot um and then yeah Yeah. after the tournament it's then the events department's job to collate feedback uh take forward any complaints or issues that we've had from that tournament. Uh, We'll have like a debrief meeting with tournament committees, find out how they found running the tournament because, you know, volunteering with Quok is um, an experience that we want to be enjoyable for people. Um, So Mm -hmm. we've made a point of definitely since Jen's been events director of of checking like how tournament committees feel about what their role was and how well they feel things were communicated to them. Because yeah, tournament committee is like a job that people can very easily do and you don't need any experience to do it. It's just about having a bit of common sense um, and Mm -hmm. organization. uh, And if you want to help, then like we're we're very open to it it's just like it's it's one of the things like listening to you and listening to bateman kind of realized that you guys do like for, for for me for example the reason why i never applied to these things and maybe i should now but like it's just because i was like well this is gonna be a very hard job or like you know i have to be in charge of everything i have to do everything from scratch but like listening to you guys it's like makes me realize that like a lot of the things are kind of put in place and obviously it doesn't take away from the the work you have to do because there is still work to do but at the same time like are you do you feel like you're do you get the help to do what you want to do yeah like i would definitely say like quidditch uk has like quite a lot of active volunteers and i know like my my department in, in particular the events department um like are great uh we've had andrew hold join the team recently uh, as an events officer and okay. he's been fantastic at like looking uh, at planning structures for next season's leagues and mm-hmm. obviously we've got Alix who is incredible and i have dan holmes who's great with like venue scouting and tournament logistics and ordering medals and trophies and such so yeah it, it's good and there's like a lot of people willing to muck in and obviously then you get tournament committees yeah some of the tournament committees i've had the pleasure of working with have been like some fantastic people i think like really great skills like i really enjoyed um working with peter stace who's just brilliant and organized you will probably have seen him at eqt sitting at a desk talking to everyone explaining everything scheduling doing everything that needs to be done um and then for dev cup there was a fantastic committee as well sam davis did such a brilliant job 
of the media there, I have to say. And mm-hmm. like Declan, the TD, was just, I like joined in their meetings in the lead up to the tournament, and it was just like everything sorted. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so, and I was <laughs> like, good, great. All good. Nice. My work here is done. And yeah, it's just, and it didn't seem to be an overwhelming amount of work for any of the committee either, because it was, there was, you know, mm-hmm. enough people to, the work could be subdivided quite fairly. And I think it kind of worked out. And that's the general feedback that we got from them, which is positive and nice to hear. Okay, that's good. Because I feel like, so do you guys ever struggle to have, um, I guess, a full, what's it called? A full, uh, a full team to run the tournament and stuff? Yeah, we do. We we rarely yeah. get enough applications to okay. put an entire committee together. I think Dev Cup was the only time we ever got more applications for a committee than we had spaces. I feel like, well, if if anyone's watching this, like, just just do try and help. Like we mentioned here, like it's not you're not going to be alone in this. You're not going to have to like you know design something super complex and stuff. No, no, like people have done this before. You you can always ask for advice. Yeah, and. It's ultimately, well, most of the times it's the tournament you will play for. And if not, well, if you're not playing in it, maybe it's still good to help out, you know, especially if you're going to be there anyways. Yeah, that's that's what I would like to encourage. And I, I'm glad you think so too, Tima. Like, mm-hmm. Quidditch UK is a, a good place to, like, cut your teeth volunteering. And there's a lot of support and a lot of, you know, open roles and a lot of, if you have ideas, you can you can bring them and they can be put into action. Yeah. And that's, I think that's really cool to be able to see how your opinions actively change things that's true well yeah it's because like especially when when i was talking to bateman it's like a lot of the times like even before that interview i was i kind of saw qk as this less you know faceless corporation like <laughs> not corporation but like organization like nice the shot. big brother sort of thing like <laughs> i can't say anything i can't do anything that sort of stuff and then talking to him, I was like well they're just basically people like us basically like they're kids like us you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same type you know it's, it's just just because they've been you know they decided to spend more time trying to organize us to have fun that's yeah. basically what you guys do well with more responsibility than that but once this thing clears up i might definitely do some um uh some volunteering work like so what what, what would be the first like role you suggest for like a starter person um depends whether you're going to events or elsewhere um if you're like mm-hmm. thinking about trying out volunteering i'd recommend going in for like a tournament director like a tournament committee position so you can specialize mm-hmm. in something so you can go in for like being a gameplay officer um if you like scheduling okay. if you like thinking about tournament structures and stuff um or you can okay. look into ATDing if you want to do something a bit more general and oh. just get like experience in how tournaments tend to be run and also if you are interested in doing any sort of tournament stuff there is absolutely nothing stopping you running a tournament. If you come to Quidditch UK and say, we want to run this tournament in this place at this time, like, what can, do you have any resources? I would be happy to, like, mm-hmm. walk through running tournaments with people. Um, and, like, people do it already. People do fantastic jobs. You know, you look at things like, um, you know, even Potato, potato Cup, uh, Battle Royale, <laughs> uh, Queen's Cup, like, these things you know they they happen and they they work and it doesn't need to be a quack official tournament i'm yeah. not advocating running tournaments without first aid or anything just oh, like no, yeah, <laughs> have definitely. like the basics in in place but it doesn't need to be complicated it doesn't need to have huge player fees it doesn't need to be a, the most complicated tournament structure in the world just do it like there's nothing stopping you okay. and the more tournaments there are the better because people apparently so i hear like playing quidditch <laughs> yeah otherwise the sport wouldn't be around if you didn't like it right right and even if it's just starting off organizing a fixture between like three teams in a park if you're mm. interested i'm like i absolutely encourage people to go for it oh, okay so is there like on the day stuff though like let's say so i'm gonna be playing and uh, i want to help out as well like what what kind of things can i do to uh i guess mm make sure that i'm focused on the work i do and at the same time make sure i don't miss any games <laughs> so um i think there's there's evidence that you can play and be on tournament committee at the same time uh, i think my favorite example of this was probably um matt fenton actually who when i td mm-hmm. northern this year he was one of my atds and managed to right. coach a team to second place as you're well aware um while yeah, true, being true. atd um and basically it's all about balancing your role with what you're hoping to do on the weekend so what um matt was involved in was the operational side of things so getting equipment there making sure gazebos were there and put up 
um, like looking at the supplies we needed. And so that doesn't really interfere with stuff on the day because you don't need to start running around and scheduling or, um, yeah. yeah, you don't need to do other things. And again, Gabri on that committee was a gameplay officer, but he did a lot of like pre-tournament gameplay scheduled stuff. Um, so he like helped draft the tournament format. Um, okay. And so yeah, know. helped with the draft and stuff. So it's all about, yeah, like if you pick specific roles within Quidditch UK tournament committees, you can quite easily do them while playing as well. Okay, that's good. Yeah, because I feel like it's important. Like everyone likes to play a tournament, but like, you know, someone needs to run it. Someone needs to organize it. Yeah. And that's why I think yeah. some of the bigger tournaments, we do struggle finding volunteers. So like PQC yeah. is always a bit of a challenge um, because everyone's playing at PQC. It's a national tournament. That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. But with even with a largely playing committee, it, it can work. Yeah, because it's not just one of you. It's like it's a bunch of people trying to focus on the same problem. And most likely, like if you're busy, someone might not be and they can take up your slack on the other way around because that's how teams work, right? Exactly, exactly. And tournament committees yeah. is really a matter of communication and teamwork <laughs> and yeah you you get like some really good experiences out of it and i think it's very important to just know that like yeah you, you're not going to be in it alone unless you decide to run a tournament single-handedly um but anything yeah. anyone does with quidditch uk will always be supported by the events department um and by the gameplay department and anyone else who has any sort of involvement really okay oh, that's good that's definitely good hopefully this podcast will definitely help rally some more support for you guys <laughs> i'd hope so i'd hope so i mean like yeah it's like bateman says you know we just we're trying to listen we you know we, we we listen to everything we read everything on the forums we we want mm -hmm. to make this a better place for people we want to make the sport better that's yeah. why we're doing this um so i think i have two more questions after this so what is your opinion on the unique community split especially that you played for both okay um so I guess I mostly know this is like the quark side of this. Obviously, I'm one of the people designing the new season structure. And so I have a lot of insight mm -hmm. into why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, I have even more insight into every criticism we've been given on it. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't think this was the best thing we could do for the sport. The criticisms we're mostly getting, as I understand, are that it's not appropriate to do a university and community split because of the ability range doesn't necessarily match up like with specific examples being lower performing community teams or higher performing university teams. I think that's the main thing that people have take issue with. It, it, I don't know if you have mm -hmm. any better awareness and, and the concern that it would cause a lack of knowledge sharing between the two uh, leagues and a lack of yeah. community spirit seem to be the things that people are concerned about. I'll address the community spirit aspect first. Um, okay. So first of all, it's not 100% you're never going to see another university player in your life. That's not that's not what we're <laughs> hoping to achieve here. We still have tournaments that will be joint. Um, higher performing university teams are welcome to opt in to EQT and play against community teams there. Um, while there will be a division in, at BQC, um, but there will be both teams mm -hmm. there, so there will be both like flights, so the community and the university, so you'll still see each other. The way mm -hmm. we're designing it is to encourage, you know, mutual volunteering across the two things. Um, yeah. Like from a tournament organization's perspective, like that's always helpful because if you only have half the players playing at one thing, then you can't have like the other like half just like the other half can help organize it and help referee. Um, obviously that's a big pressure to put on university teams, so I doubt it would work exactly like that, but mm -hmm. hopefully like it would encourage that and encourage more coaching. So I think the example I point you to is Dev Cup, where it's dominated by university teams and it is a tournament where there's a fantastic level of support provided by members of the community. There's coaching sessions, there's individual coaching. <laughs> You end the water as well. Nice. I'm um, trying to copy you, yeah. Yeah. It's all part of the big galaxy brain strats for this golf game. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you get all this fantastic coaching, like, support. You get people on the sidelines cheering like they've like they've never seen Quidditch like this before. And it's fantastic. Like, it's a really excellent experience. And it's one of the most enjoyable fixtures of the year because of that. You get to see, like, mm -hmm. real integration and support between the teams. And I think... I don't think that playing each other is necessarily the best way to 
get camaraderie. If anything, I think the massive score margins and whatever other drama That's happens, it just creates division. Okay. And if if you know if you don't have to get decimated by a team, it's much nicer when they come and coach you later. That's that's you know maybe my my opinion from being on a uni team speaking. Yeah, I don't think it necessarily is going to um, ruin the community um, spirit. And I think, you know, as long as there are teams like Olympians uh, who are willing to go out and help coach teams and foster those links, then that's fantastic. And I know a lot of other community players are willing to do that as well. There's talk of a team in the Southwest doing something similar, which would be, you know, really, really exciting to see. And I really hope that goes well because the Southwest has suffered a lot in the last season. So, yeah, that's my argument for why the community will not be destroyed. Um, I think... Uh, yeah, the other main point people make is about ability not being represented by whether you're university or not. I can see why people are concerned about this because there are really good examples of teams which have performed spectacularly in the last season. So at EQT we obviously had Southampton and Warwick and um, Chester all playing and you know not being able to be up there with community teams like doing as well as if not uh -huh. better than many community teams and it's it's like great to see that and then you also have at the lower end uh your unbreakables who went to dev cup concerned mm -hmm. about not being able to play teams on their level um so first of all like in light of our first season proposal we have revised it such that dev cup won't be university only it will be open to community teams as well um uh -huh. which i think will make a difference like there's not going to be a complete shutdown you're not going to ever be in that situation again so i guess there's two main reasons um why we think that the community university split is still valid in spite of these performance things uh, for me, I think the main reason is the attrition and variation in abilities of teams. Like, you get many, yeah. many teams with mass exoduses, right? And you see them massively change in ability between season. And, you, for example, like OEQC in my first year, um, Manchester last year, uh, you get teams that, that go to EQT one year and then don't exist the next, which I think there's two examples. For example, Bath went to EQT last year and now don't have a team. Um, so mm -hmm. I think it would be really difficult to account for those changes in a league system with promotion and relegation even, because I just don't see how you would be able to like keep moving like four or five teams constantly. And it, it, it wouldn't, if you had like the top two and top, like bottom two go up and down, that probably wouldn't even be enough to account for that change. Um, and okay. it, it's it's much harder to have an ability based seeding system across seasons when there's this much change between teams yeah. still. And maybe that's something that will settle down eventually, but it, it's still I think kind of an issue. Um, so having something a little bit more concrete is I think a good idea. So defining your team as the style you play in. Very nice. It also creates a framework for looking into getting box recognition and sport England recognition. You don't really get other mm -hmm. sports. Um, I think potentially with a couple of exceptions in dodgeball and maybe a few others uh, where you don't get clubs playing universities. Um, it, it's not really how it works. And this isn't a decision we've taken lightly and this is something that we thought about and listened to all the criticism on. Ultimately, we feel that even if we did a Div 1, Div 2 split now and then we'd, we'd end up having to go to university split anyway, Mm -hmm. um, and we've spoken to Quidditch, um, US Quidditch about this as well, and like they did something similar, and they've just been like, yeah, we think that the university community is probably the wisest thing to go down because that's just it's much more easy to define, and it has mm -hmm. it, it lays a better framework for how how to organize it in the future. Like this has been a lot of work, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of listening to the community and revamping and going back and revisiting and revisiting. It's not something we can really afford to do every year. Um, okay. So this, this we want to do this, you know, in an anticipatory way. We want to do it like actively, not just responding to changes as they happen. We want to prepare and think yeah. like this is likely to be a problem. Let's add, let's make this sort this out before it becomes a problem. Hey, you won! What? Oh, absolute on, madness! Nice. <laughs> we did it wow nice, nice. What, what a game yeah i always lose against people on my channel i hate this <laughs> <laughs> it's because you're just too busy nah, focusing fine. on being a good interviewer 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to listen to what you guys speak. Yeah, let's use that excuse. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to be fair, this is perfect because I've run out of questions to ask you. Um, yeah, is there anything else you want to mention? Yeah, I guess I just I don't want people to think that Quidditch UK are just doing this and not listening to things. Like as as Bateman said, um, we do listen um, as much as we can. We're, we're we're there on every Facebook thread. We might not respond because that takes a lot of time, but we're hearing all the criticisms. Mm -hmm. And Abby Whiteley has done a fantastic job of putting out a lot of ways for people's opinions to be heard. So we've had the like initial general forum in response to the new season proposal. We've had the uh, round mm -hmm. tables where people could sign up and be part of a discussion group chaired by Abby. And we we've taken all that feedback and incorporated it. Um, and and then in the next um, phase, we then got that community survey, which was taken by 250-ish uh, people, I think. So we got data oh, from that that we can use to make decisions about the size of regionals and what we do. Um, okay. And obviously things are going to be affected by the COVID situation. Um, and we're still in yeah, talks about that yeah, at the moment sense. and what the best thing to do is. And hopefully we'll have some announcements out soon um, with regards okay. to what we're doing with the next season. But yeah, it's just, it's a process and it's a lot of decisions, but you know, we're, we're listening. And if people like have things to say, they should email Quidditch UK or just like seek us out and have a word and like we're, we're very much here to to listen and take on advice okay that's good that's good stuff all right well I guess thanks for coming and uh, no thanks for beating me <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you for enlightening me with this brilliant game um, which I'm clearly <laughs> a talent at Clearly, it's uh, yeah, a sports wow. league for me. Yeah, I mean, I guess my golf experiences counts for nothing at this rate. <laughs> oh man. Oh. Yeah, no, I should just you. retire. Let's uh, delete the channel. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure. I'm sure you can uh, win it back. Win it back next time. You just have yeah. to strategically choose a guest <laughs> who doesn't know how to play video games, yeah. which you technically did with me, but um, unfortunately, lost, yeah. my natural skill just... for golf is just mm. too much. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I should just stop listening to whatever you guys say, just ask questions and then just focus on the game and whatever you guys say. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just be like, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Yeah, cool. Oh, man. All right, well, thanks for coming. Thank you very uh, much for having me. Okay, bye. Bye.